Hey guys, I wanted to jump on real quick and go through a simple engraving example with the, the Bob Art software. So uh, what I'm going to do is just go to the Bob Art tab and if you guys have the Bob Art software, it's an add-on, uh, you can use this uh, a couple of different ways. One of its primary uh, purposes is to work with images. Uh, convert them and also 3D relief and boss modeling. Uh, both of those are CAD steps. So Bob Art is a CAD tool. Uh, it does offer a, a tool path as well, uh, V carving, but it's primarily used for CAD. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to images and I'm going to choose load image. Let me uh, kind of get over here and I'm just going to grab uh, this image that I found uh, online of this lion's head. Okay, if we zoom into the image, you can see it, it's pretty pixelated. Um, generally, we're looking for a better um, contrast between the dark area. We just want black and we want white. It, uh, the software tends to do a better job vectorizing that way, uh, but in this example, it will be fine. So we load the image up in the background. Now, you do have the ability to uh, trace over this. So if you wanted to come in with something like maybe a spline, uh, you could start tracing, uh, well, maybe not that kind of spline, a uh, fit spline. Let me turn off the snap grid. You know, something something like this. You can come around and start uh, tracing around the shape. This is time consuming, but uh, you'll find some projects that's the best approach to uh, converting the image or certain sections of the image. Uh, the other way to do it is just to use the vectorization. So we can go to the the lion head here, we can go to vectorize. Uh, we can adjust this threshold to kind of get rid of some of the, the fuzziness that we see around the image. You know, you as you move it one way or the other, you can see how this threshold value affects the, the quality of the image. So we'll just bring this in a little bit. Uh, let's go probably somewhere around here. It looks about fine. And then we'll choose OK. Um, at this point, if we hit I on our keyboard, we can hide the image. So we can show the image or we can hide the image. So we can hide the image. We can get rid of some of our other geometry. Okay. So that is the, the lion's head that we're working with. Now, the next step that I want to do is I'm going to go to my layers menu here and I'll add a new layer and then we'll call this stock. And then what I'll do is I'll draw out the material size that I may be working with. Okay, so I'll go to rectangle. Um, this is going to be the lower left hand corner. And in this example, I'm going to use a 12 by 12 and we'll say, okay. So what that does is it uh, gives us the area of the stock. So I'm saying I'm using a, a 12 by 12 piece of material. Um, my next step is to take my logo and to move it into the center here. Uh, hey, how we doing, Tony? Um, <clears throat> so, so how do I move my image into the center here? Uh, well, one of the things I'm going to do is just create some construction geometry. Uh, so I'm just going to draw a line between these corners here. Uh, there's a couple of points of view. If I would have draw, if I if I had drawn the stock on center, then I wouldn't need to move the part, uh, or I wouldn't need to draw this construction line, but. Uh, for the workflow that I'm doing here, I'll draw a construction line so I can find the center of that line. I'll go to Utilities and then Translate. Um, from here, I can select the logo that I want to work with. And then you will you can see there's this handle here. Uh, if I click on it, that will drag it along that axis. If I click on this one, it will drag it along that axis. If I click the dot right in the center here, then I can move it both axes at the same time. If I hover over this line, I can wake it up to find the center point, and then I can just highlight that center point to move this to zero. And you'll see how that moves right on center. Um, once I've done that, I also may want to scale the image. So I'm going to turn scale on. Um, if I try to scale it at this point, it will scale it from the corner. And uh, I actually don't want it to scale from the corner. So what I'm going to do is say scale from center. And this will allow me to make the shape bigger or smaller as needed in order for it to fit uh, inside of our material. So this size looks about good here. I'll choose OK and then cancel. Now at this point, 
uh, what we'll see is that we have our our shape set up and we have our stock set up uh, I'm gonna come in and just select this line um, in order to select this line again you can see I go up to selection mode I turn selection mode on then I window pick this geometry and then I hit delete on my keyboard okay so that gives me uh, the stock size and it also gives me my converted image now unless I was going to add any more details or text or anything like that I'd, I'm ready to go ahead and start uh, machining okay so we'll go to the machine side now so I'm going to go to the cam tree here and uh, I'm gonna I'm pushing the center mouse wheel to get a rotate I tend to look at this um, in 3d you can look at it in 2d but as soon as I go to machining I tend to look at it in 3d I'll go to my uh, cam defaults here and I can right click to create a new job I typically do that um, right click on the cam default and create a new job uh, if you're new to Bobcad you may just go to cam and then create new job uh, e either either method is fine okay so when I'm creating a job I'm gonna pick the type of job this is gonna be a milling job and then I'm gonna pick the type of machine and the machine is really whether it's a three axis machine or four axis machine but uh, if it's a router sometimes you have to change what positive X or negative X does uh, but to start with we'll just go with a uh, our three axis mill here now I'm gonna run the stock wizard so I click stock wizard here it's asking me for the workpiece. If I had a solid model of for my part, I would select that as the workpiece. But I don't in this example, so I'll go ahead and uh, skip ahead. Uh, at this point, it's going to pick up the uh, the square that I drew or the material size that I drew. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is so that will populate this x and y dimension. Uh, the other thing you hear you see here is this z value. Okay, so this z value is the thickness of the material. I'm gonna set this to 750 now once we get the stock set up the next thing that we're looking at here is setting the origin or the zero or the the touch off position I uh, by default it will pick up the world coordinate system which is the intersection of these crosshairs here uh, but if you wanted to choose a different location you could do so uh, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and that has my job set up now it's important to understand that once you have your job set up, you can save this file as like a starter file uh, so that you don't have to go through and select the stock or uh, select the zero, okay? Um, if you do save it as a starter file, then you can select this geometry and delete it and copy and paste new geometry for whatever your logo or engraving might be, all right? so. Okay, so I have my job set up. Now what I want to do is is figure out how I want to program this. So again, if, if, if you've used Bobcad in the past, it's likely you would go to the machine setup, right click, and then choose your cutting strategy. In this case, mill to axis. Uh, if you're newer to the software, you may go to the cam milling tab here, and there's some different icons that will get you to the same place. So we could go to one of these icons and choose mill to axis okay um, for me I'm like I said I'll go to my machine setup we'll go to mill to axis uh, from there the first thing the software is looking for is what geometry do you want to use to engrave so we're gonna click on select geometry and then we'll just window pick the geometry that we want to work with uh, I'm doing a window pick here because we are we are uh, just engraving if I was profiling, I may do a chain selection. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, a feeling that the internet might be a little slow right now. Okay, so from here I'll go ahead and set how deep I want to cut. So I'm going to go 20 thou, and then we'll choose OK. Our next step would be to come over and adjust the uh, machining strategy that we're going to use. Uh, in this example, I'm going to do an engraving. We'll choose next. Uh, I'll come over to my engraving tool. And then this is where we're going to pick what size tool that we're going to use. So I'm going to go to the tool crib. I'll go to a V tool here. And then I'm going to add one in from the library. Okay, so let me go back through that again. Okay, so again, I'll go to the tool crib. I'm going to say add from tool library. Um, I'm sorry I'm gonna pick the category a tool then I'm gonna to click add from tool library 
and then I'll come in and pick um, a tool that makes sense. Okay, so we'll do a quarter inch 30 degree V tool. We'll choose OK on that. We'll choose OK again. Now the other thing that we look at over here is the speeds and feeds. This is the program speeds and feeds. Some machines you have to program a spindle uh, speed. Other machines you may not. So we're going to just put 10,000 in here. Um, over here this is the cutting feed rate plunge uh, cutting feed rate and plunge feed rate this is the speed in which it would be moving while it was cutting this is the speed in which it would be moving when it comes down into the material okay uh, those numbers seem okay uh, other than that I can just click compute and then what that's done is it's processed uh, the toolpath if I hide the stock in the material you'll see the green toolpath uh, that's the the path the tool is going to follow uh, in order to do the engraving. Now the last thing that we might do is post out our code. So we'll click post and then what that will do is write all the G code for that engraving. So again just a quick example of using Bob Art to convert an image. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback uh, I look forward to just comment in the video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you.